Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for CarGurus, and this is the redesigned 2018 Chevrolet Traverse. Boy, it sure looks good, doesn't it? Especially for a big family size SUV. Well, it ought to, given the extra cost red paint and the high country trim level, which together push the price up over $53,000. But that price is actually justifiable given that the high country models have every single feature that Chevrolet offers on this thing from the factory. Plus, it's bigger inside than all of its competitors, and it's even bigger inside than Chevrolet's own full-size Tahoe SUV. Come on, let's go for a drive, and I'll tell you all about it. Compared to a Chevy Tahoe, the new Traverse is roomier for second and third row passengers, it carries more cargo, it gets better fuel economy, and it costs less money. And what that means is that unless you absolutely require the Tahoe's extra payload and towing capacity, or you just have to have the few extra inches of front seat space, you are going to be happier with the new Traverse. Now pricing starts at just under $31,000 for the L trim level. From there, you can upgrade to the LS, the LT with cloth seats, the LT with leather seats, the RS, the Premier, and the High Country. A racy looking red line package is available for the Premier models. Notably, the Traverse RS is equipped with a turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine delivering 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. All other Traverses, including my High Country test vehicle, have a 3.6 liter V6 engine that's generating 310 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque. Maximum trailering capacity with the V6 is 5,000 pounds. A nine-speed automatic feeds the power to the front wheels and an all-wheel drive system is optional. High Country models include standard all-wheel drive and it's a special twin clutch version that's designed to put power to the rear wheel with the most traction. It's similar to how a limited slip rear differential might work. Also, when the twin clutch system is placed in two-wheel drive mode, the setup disconnects the rear axle from the driveline in order to help maximize fuel economy. As is true of most modern General Motors products, there isn't a whole lot to complain about when it comes to the Traverse's driving dynamics. For a vehicle that weighs a minimum of 4,300 pounds, acceleration is strong, the nine-speed automatic transmission deftly and decisively upshifts as the SUV gains speed, and the V6 is refined too, emitting very little in the way of noise, vibration, or harshness. And it returned 20.6 miles per gallon on my testing loop. That exceeded the EPA's estimate of 20 miles per gallon, and that is pretty terrific. Now the steering, the ride quality, the handling, those are all impressive too. The Traverse drives smaller than it is, which means it's easier to maneuver in parking lots or on narrow country roads than you might expect given its exterior size. Suspension tuning masks the Traverse's weight nicely, and with just one person aboard, the SUV feels downright athletic. Look, it's no Camaro, obviously, but it's also not a sloppy mess when you're hustling either. The ride is taut, body motions are expertly controlled, and the steering is perfectly weighted while proving responsive. No doubt, the active return assist system is at work in making the steering so satisfying. Given the Traverse's mission in life, which is to carry lots of people and or lots of stuff, it really needs better brakes. When I was driving in the mountains, descending to sea level from about 2,000 feet in elevation at a pretty rapid clip, they cooked themselves to the point where the anti-lock brake system could not activate during a panic braking stop. Now, Chevy might call these components Duralife brakes for the fact that they last a long time, but what's more important is that your brakes add duration to your life. Chevy needs to improve here. I also found the cabin to be somewhat loud in terms of road noise and at higher speeds, wind noise. But you know, if that bothers you, you can just trot right on over to the Buick dealership and help yourself to a quiet tuned Buick Enclave, which is the same thing as the Traverse, but with an extra layer of refinement. Okay, let's switch gears and talk about the Traverse's massive interior. So what do you think of this loft brown and black interior color scheme? It's pretty nice, isn't it? Well, if you want it, you're gonna have to get the high country trim level in order to get it. The good news is that both the Premier and the high country models include heated and ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, and a heated steering wheel. Also, a triple zone climate control system is standard for every Traverse, and it includes a humidity sensor. Now, as far as comfort is concerned, I had some trouble finding a perfect position behind the steering wheel. 
and I blame the eight-way power adjustable driver's seat for that, which lacks a separate cushion tilt function. Also, the hard plastic up here on the upper door panels doesn't help, and the door armrest actually feels kind of thinly padded. But the power tilt telescopic steering wheel is a pleasure to grip, and it's wrapped in soft, smooth leather. It's very nice. Moving to the back, captain's chairs are included in most versions of the Traverse. Unfortunately, you can't get a bench seat in any version of this SUV that's got leather, which seems like an oversight to me. The captain's chairs have inboard armrests, they slide forward and back on tracks, and the one on the right-hand side tips and slides forward for easier access to the third row seat, even if you've got a child seat installed in that location. The second row seats themselves are quite comfortable. They feel like thickly padded dining room chairs. The third row seat, on the other hand, not so much. Given the Traverse's dimensions, I was expecting better third row accommodations. The only way I fit is if the second row seat is positioned in the middle of its travel, and even then I think I'd get cranky in no time at all. The seat itself is hard and flat, but at least it provides a little bit of thigh support. Now, if you're planning to use a third row seat on a regular basis, especially to carry adults, you really need to check out the Volkswagen Atlas. You're gonna to need to upgrade to a Ford Expedition, or you're just gonna to have to bite the bullet and get a minivan already. When it comes to cargo space, you've got 23 cubic feet of it behind the third row seat. As is true of most SUVs, that sounds a lot better than it looks. However, in the Traverse, you can squeeze a couple of full-size suitcases in by standing them upright, plus a compact folding stroller. There's also a storage compartment located under the cargo floor, which is perfect for hauling home the groceries. The High Country models have a gimmicky power folding third row seat, but when both sides are laid flat, the Traverse offers 58.1 cubic feet of space, which is more than a Chevy Tahoe or a VW Atlas. Maximum space measures a whopping 98.2 cubic feet, which again is more than either the Tahoe or the Atlas. Get into a modern Chevrolet and you're gonna find exactly what you're looking for exactly where you expect to find it. And look at this transmission shifter. It's a traditional one with a familiar Prindle layout, except for the silly tap shift buttons on the top. Isn't it a thing of beauty? Simplicity and familiarity are the rule inside the Traverse, but don't take that to mean that this SUV isn't technologically advanced. In my opinion, Chevrolet's MyLink infotainment system is one of the easiest and most pleasing to use in the industry, and it comes with everything from a 4G LTE Wi-Fi connection and smartphone projection to OnStar subscription services and programmable team driving report card technology. Speaking of your kids, if you're a brand new parent, you're going to come to appreciate the Traverse's rear seat reminder system. The way it works is this. If you open a back door before you get in and start the engine, when you get to your next destination, It'll give you a reminder chime and it'll give you a warning message in the driver information display. Now at first you're going to find this to be a little irritating, but then when you start to think about the fact that it could easily remind a distracted parent about a child in the back seat, or a pet owner that uh, his or her pooch is along for the ride, or that you know, somebody might leave their laptop in the back seat with the presentation on it right before a big meeting, you'll actually come to appreciate this feature. Speaking of safety, the Traverse is available with all modern driver assistance and collision avoidance systems. However, and this is one of the few criticisms that I can really level at the Traverse, you have to buy one of the more expensive Premier or High Country models to access several of them. At a time when Honda offers such systems as an affordable option on lower level trims, and when Toyota makes them standard equipment on every version of their vehicles, this strategy is not a winning one. So, should you put the redesigned 2018 Chevy Traverse on your shopping list? I think you should. The Traverse itself is, for the most part, exactly what midsize crossover SUV buyers want and need. Good looking, roomy, and available with a wide range of features that many people seek, it is, in many respects, one of the best choices in the segment. But it's not flawless. I've got more to say about the new Traverse, and you'll find it all in my full review on cargurus.com. I hope you found this video review helpful, and if you did, please share it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For all of us here at Cargurus, thank you for watching.